wanted to take a few minutes and just go over a little bit about Arnold lighting and what it is and what it does and how to use it. And this will just be a fairly short intro, not going into a lot of depth, but I'm just introducing you to the idea here. So you can see I've got a scene started here with just some simple objects, just to have something to render. There's also a link to some starter scenes that um, you might find useful. Those are in the lighting and rendering section. And um, one of my favorites to play with is the toy robot, but there's lots to choose from. So. Maybe I'll use one of those in the future, but right now all you really need is just a couple of primitive objects. So I've got a floor plane and a sphere, a cone, and a cylinder. What you choose specifically is not that important. Um, and what I'm going to do is, first of all, go to the rendering settings, just to remind you. Um, you should hopefully be in the habit of turning off the default light under render options. If you have forgotten about that, just remember to turn that off. If you are forgetting to turn it off, it's probably not the end of the world because it should turn off anyway as soon as you put a light into your scene. But it's good to just turn it off anyway. And I am going to um, switch the render using to Arnold. Now, if that isn't there, uh, it should be there, but if it's not, you might have to enable it under your plugins. And if you go to Settings Preferences under Windows, go to Plugin Manager, and scroll down until you get to M2A. It's called M2A. There it is. And it should be on loaded and auto load. So if you see these are unchecked, then check them and you should be able to use that. If this isn't there, you have to download it. And there is a link to download it on um, in our uh, lighting and rendering section. So, But it should be there if you went with the default installation of Maya. And it should be activated if you went with the default installation of Maya. So um, I'm just going to go to the Arnold tab for just a moment. And you can see that there are these different sample amounts. Um, I'll get to what that means later, but they start off just a little on the low side. Um, I would take the diffuse samples maybe up to three or four. Specular I'll just take them all up to three. So, um, and uh, before I go any further, let me tell you a little bit about what Arnold is going to do. Is um, unlike ray lights or shadow map lights, Arnold is going to simulate photons bouncing around your scene, and it's going to behave much more like real light than the 3D lights you've been using up to this point at a cost of tremendous render times. So, you really got to leave yourself time to render these, but with that said, they do make some wonderful photorealistic renderings. And um, I'm going to leave it at that just for now. And go ahead and add a light. Now, um, I'm not going to add lights from the same place anymore. Uh, these will work, but they won't do what we want them to do. What you want to do is go to the Arnold menu and go to lights and you're going to choose one of these lights and I'm going to start mostly using area light and sky dome so those are probably the two that you're going to use the most often and I'll throw in a mesh light too so area light is going to be just like um, the area light from what you're already familiar with from Maya and it's going to behave 
a lot like that area of light. I'm going to pull it up a little bit, and you want to size it up as well. Um, let's go ahead and create a camera. I'm going to do a render camera, and we'll just do create camera, and go through panels, perspective camera one, get my get my view framed up here. Okay. And in real life these lights would have a large kind of box type thing. Um, let me see if I can find a good example here. So you're going to see a pretty big light lighting the subject in real life, and this is kind of what you're going for here. So um, you should be going for real lights when you do this. So make it nice and big, and let's go ahead and go to the attribute editor. And I'm not quite seeing there's what I was looking for. I needed to scroll up. Okay. Um, color, obviously, is color. Um, intensity, a lot of this stuff is, is obvious. This is probably not obvious, where it says normalize. You're going to want to turn that off. So that will, turning it off will cause the brightness to respond according to how big or small the light is, which is what it should do. And... I'm going to go ahead and do a render, and we can kind of tweak these settings while we render. So if I go to Arnold Open Render View and press the Start button, and I'm going to go to View Test Resolution 50% to save some time. And you'll see this updates in real time. So you can actually just leave this on and make some tweaks to the area light. But um, right out of the gates, you can see big differences in how this light works and how it looks. So um, again, it's simulating photons uh, bouncing around the scene. And if I, um, for instance, um, you don't have to do this, but just for an example, I'll add a plane to the scene, and let's get this kind of... stop the render so it'll maybe work a little faster. So I'm going to take the plane and just bring it back here. I'm going to assign a new material. Again, you don't really have to do this if you don't want to, but let's just call it plane material. Okay, and this is going to simulate light bounce, so I'll make it white, and you'll see these objects brighten up from behind. And if I make it a color, you're going to see that color reflect onto the light on the objects. can't see it a whole lot on the um, cylinder 
cone and sphere, but you can see it on the floor back here. Um, so this is, again, simulating photons bouncing around, and um, it works a lot more like real light should work, uh, how you would expect it to. So um, I'm going to select that light again, and I'm going to do some stuff. You'll notice that these shadows, usually out of the box, are going to be a little bit choppy. And that's where those samples come in, is that you might see some um, diffuse that's choppy or some shadows that are choppy. Uh, you can look at your different... Usually it's right there. You can look at your different channels and stuff and see, um, see how it looks, but usually more often than not, like if I just increase it to three samples, that'll be an improvement. And um, let's up this to three samples as well, so that the light is casting essentially more photons and spreading them out a little more. So you can see some improvement. And that's that's usually enough. You can go higher, but you know it's up to you. Now another thing you can do is um, you can turn an object into a light as well. So let's say um, you want to make, for example, a fluorescent light bulb. So let's take this um, cylinder or whatever object you want. go to Arnold Lights Mesh Light and it should turn it on by default usually but we're gonna of course have to tweak the settings because that's always how it goes and I'm gonna turn off normalize you're pretty much always gonna turn off normalize on these different lights. I'm going to turn on light visible because I want the um, object to be visible in this case so it looks like a uh, fluorescent light or you know maybe maybe we'll go good old lightsaber here. And you can see again it's going to come off a little grainy until you pump up the samples at least a little bit. Let's try two just to see if that gets any better. So yeah you can still kind of see the grain at two so maybe maybe we do want three after all. So and again this is going to tremendously increase your render times so when you're setting these up, the, the price you pay for photorealistic light is um, you know, huge render times. So just plan on rendering it overnight or something like that. So let's see, it still looks a tad choppy. I'm going to add a few more bounces here on the diffuse specular channel. Uh, I'm going to add one on the indirect channel and the volume channel. And that's not going to decrease the choppiness, but it's going to increase the amount of bounces that these photons do, kind of similar to rays. So you can see the effect here where it's kind of illuminating more stuff because it'll go from here and then bounce over here and then bounce back and these ones will bounce off this surface and bounce off this surface and so on. Uh, light filters you can 
look that up on your own if you want to play with those. But that's where you would get your uh, fall off and um, you can have like exclusions in there. So, and I think I'm going to have to go into the render settings and increase the number of samples here. render times are going up and this is at a fairly low resolution so keep that in mind so yeah now it's starting to smooth out again okay so let me stop this so it won't be quite so slow so I'm going to delete that light, and I'm going to delete my area light. Okay, and that's just a sh cylinder now, I think. Now I should be in total blackness, because I deleted all the lights. So the scene is totally black now with no lights. Um, if you go to the alpha channel, you'll see that the, the objects are still there. Just no light. So I'm going to do um, one more light here. I'm going to do a sky dome. And let's see. And maybe crash it. Let's find out. Okay, it's alive. Cool. Um, so a sky dome will create this lovely um, sphere around your scene that will light it holistically like a nice outdoor light. Uh, it's a huge sphere as you can see back there. Um, and this one you usually do want normalize on so um, it can go either way. Whichever looks better to you is probably the right choice. but. Um, Either way, uh, and there's a lot of stuff you can do with these sky domes. Um, you can use these to light exteriors, obviously, but they're nice for lighting interiors too, strangely enough. So you can have like an opening that lets this light into an interior. Um, again, I would encourage you to go through the existing tutorials and documentation on Arnold because there's really a lot to it. Um, but let's just choose a nice sky color. And you will see this definitely affect the color of the... This is maybe a little too far over the edge, but um, you can see how it affects the color of the of the objects here, and so you could also go sun color if you wanted to. Maybe go a little more golden yellow, and I'm going to take the saturation down a tad. Let me stop this so I can get a better response.
Okay, so the sky view has a lot of the same settings as the other lights. By the way, you can also select a, an area to render using this. So it's just a cropped area that renders. Select the sky dome again. I'm going to use color temperature and just warm. That's going to be way too warm. 8127, that's going to be hot. Hot, hot, hot. No, it's physics. The warmer is, is blue. The cooler is orange and red. Yeah, there we go. Isn't that weird how physics is f the opposite of the art world? The warmer colors are red, yellow, orange. The cooler colors are blue and green in the art world. And it's exactly the opposite in physics. Let's once again pump up the samples a little bit. All right. down the exposure. So I think that's the diffuse samples going too high. I'm going to put that back down to one because that's throwing out too many fo photons. I'm going to put the camera down to one too. Also, I should say. And let's go back to a positive exposure. I think you get the idea here. So, and when you turn on use color temperature, you get exposure and temperature, which is, I think, a nice way to do it. Again, simulating physical lights. So, um, and this doesn't even touch on Arnold surfaces. There are certainly a number of surfaces to explore, but um, it does give you some stuff to get started playing with. So. Have fun, and again, remember to keep yourself, keep your time well managed that you leave yourself a good amount of time to render these images because they will take a long time.